trying to get the right word out. But most importantly, y'all need to take y'all behind the law school. That's what it boils down to. We need people like y'all that can fight the system. But it's also... Are, we're all good people. It only it, takes two years to go to law school. And for those who are really listening, you don't have to have a bachelor's degree to go to law school. But most of no. us, can't, we can't afford it because we're broke now and losing See, our homes because of, sir, because sir, of family there are, courts. There are plenty of federal loans that you can get to go to law school. Trust me on that. Okay. All of you guys who are on here that are passionate and y'all are talking about getting rid of these judges, why don't y'all become the lawyers and the judges that we want to see? Wow. Hey, I'm, I'm, hey, Shereke, I'm going to call you, all right? Uh, <laughs> That's another really call you. Call you. Sorry to sorry to cut in, but I actually yeah. was talking to my um. So I'm with I'm with the organization called Single Fathers Network, a local um, Arizona Fathers Rights, and I was actually talking to the um, the founder about that. So mm -hmm. I definitely want to pick your brain on that thing. Please, that. please. Yeah. Wait, I, I need help. I'm, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm burned out. I'm asking God get me out of this crazy system. I just want to encourage and empower y'all to keep going because I'm seeing people get so burnt out in the system where they're like. I'll just give up my rights to my kids, and I'm not a quitter, so it wow. bothers me. I'm trying not to cry, but this, I take this home with me. Y'all not dealing with an average attorney. I'm not average. I care about y'all kids like these are my kids. Is, is your contact information on good on on gooddadact.com? I have no idea, at all. Oh. but I can I can give it to you now. It's um, you can follow me on. Instagram, Facebook. I'm mainly on TikTok, which is Ask You Law Office, A S K E W Law Office. Um, my direct cell phone is 813-315-0057. And I'm also on Facebook. I'm I'm out there only because I have this business. Otherwise I wouldn't be. I, I tagged her on Facebook too. In the video. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question from Jerry. We have a question from Derek. Had his hand up. We gotta put your hand up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Derek. You have been waiting for a while. Okay. That's okay. Actually, I just want to say thank you, Miss Askew, for the things that you do. And like I said before, I'm not trying to generalize things, but I gotta tell you that this is a sea of criminals and liars. And finding a good person, and a good lawyer, is like a needle in a haystack on Mars. And I gotta say that I have seen many on uh, Dr. Jennings' uh, uh, podcast here. So. Uh, with that being said, this is going to go to Robert. What I just heard is nothing more than child abuse, and they are hiding behind corporate crimes and their, you know, their liability. Um, I encourage everyone to look up corporate crimes and see what it says, because when you look at corporate crimes, you will find the family court is nothing more than a corporation. It's not a court, because a court, you deal with uh, uh, dialogue. It's a monologue, and they control both sides, and they filter information can't hear what they want to hear. They don't want to hear the facts. And whatever hap whatever's happening with Robert is a disgrace. And I know this because it's happening to me. And I know this because it's happening to others. Because I see it every day on these support groups. We're all part of the same situation. And the reason why these things are still going on is because they are remaining silent. And if you remain silent when there's child abuse going on, that is a crime. It is a crime. And I'm telling you because I work in the medical field. These are the people that we would be reporting to the authorities. And these people are doing it every day, multiple times a day, to innocent parents. And they are having state-sponsored crimes against its own citizenry. And then you have to fight to get your rights back. Because they say everyone should know the law. Well, they should have been taken to begin with by crimes, by ignorance and stupidity. And I'm sorry to say, there are great lawyers out there. I just wish I knew more of them. Yeah. The biggest thing, what you were speaking about, Derek, um, and well, you, have, you have to raise your hand because Blanche is next. Let me go. Okay. Blanche, and then you can come on, Robert. Blanche. So I just wanted to know, um, I just wanted to say for people that, um, like myself and Mr. Um, Hunt and his twins, we raise these kids from babies all the way until they get to know us and been in a home with us. So have the judge to snatch these kids from everything they know to people that they don't know. And then now that my grandson has, we haven't spoken to him in three weeks. And the last time me and my husband spoke to him, he was like, why did y'all take, why did she take me from him? So can you imagine a child that's on medication? That's child abuse right there. Snatching a child out of a home that he's been in for the last nine years. 
go to school every day with his friends, but the judge say, oh, he had made new friends, but he's mentally challenged. You know, so, and then you got grandparents like myself raising somebody's child, and all of a sudden you just take this child. So you drop your child off for 10 years almost, and just, then the judge just take them and just give them back. How's that so? You know, that's not fair to the parents that's being parents. Because my kids are grown in their 30s, and then I took that ch- chance of taking on my responsibility of my grandson. And this judge did never, he never looked at none of the evidence, the 398 documents that I had. And 19 and said he never looked at nothing. Text messages on the um on the uh, on my uh transcript. She said she um uh, she was like a baby. The judge actually, you like a babysitter? He said yes. She said yes to him. Like, do you know what kind of medication he take? No. Who did the IEP? I, I mean, she don't know nothing. So how did you get his child to her? And Mr. Hunt kids to this whoever else where they at? That's crazy. This is child abuse. This is nothing but challenges. Tell tell about the four um, standards that they said you okay. had to meet. So I had this will be four points here in Maryland. It's called um, perfecto parent. Um, the parent had to be, uh, um, be abandoned for over six months. She was gone since 2015. My son wrote the um, the uh, power attorney, so it had to be two parents. That was an agreement, him and her. So the document showed her signature. She said it wasn't. But I had all four points. But the judge said, um, Judge Gonzalez, Paul J. Gonzalez said, I didn't meet the four points, I only met three. So where he was at for 10 years, almost 10 years, if I didn't meet the four points. I took him to his doctor's appointment. He's never been behind in his shots. But his sister had mental illness too. She just started getting her shots in 2021. She just started going to school. She never been to a... Um, a clinic, I mean, especially to say that she is diagnosed with ADHD or autism, and she had the same thing. So how is that being a parent? She don't know the medication that her daughter takes. She didn't even, it's on the transcript. What medicine take? She didn't know. Like, my grandson take full of it. You know, she didn't even know when the last, she went to the school. I took her to the school. She never spoke to the teachers, but yet you gave this child back. Me and Miss, we are, like, over the top. And I look at my, and I told him I spend money. I bought his school clothes for the whole year, and they still allow him to go. And this is sick, here, Merlin. This is sick. Robert, go ahead, Robert. Blanche, all I can say is, I mean, I'll speak on the other aspect, but I mean, I feel for you because I know my girls very well very very well i haven't seen him in two years so i don't know what's recently going on but i knew all of what was going on with their medication took them to everything took them to their after school activities the dance recital soccer practice did all that but you know what that when it came on the 21st and they arrested me on false charges they don't care about the trauma they're they're saying trauma this trauma that trauma this they don't care about but you know what it's just traumatizing when you withhold a child from a parent a loving parent than than to rip them away from them. So, you know, I, I just wanted to speak on that, that I understand where you're coming from. And, you know, it, it's, it, they don't, they, 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 they say it's always for the children's best interest. You think it's the children's best interest to be to, torn away from parents? You think that in any way, so I, I get where you're coming from. And, and you know what, uh, it's not right by any means. And then on top of that, a lot of these judges I'm seeing, they don't even want to hear from the kids. Because I'm a proponent of having the kids come to court and tell you, this is what I want. And they don't want to hear from them. Well, it's also the statute, the statute of, uh, of how old they are. Because my oldest daughter's 13. No. And he actually was, so they had the forensic uh, interviews with the girls where he viewed the videos of my girls in their, in their, in their, in their interviews. He watched those and then he... He uh, uh, was going to have them come and testify, my oldest two, to whether or not I was a threat or not or anything else like that. When he watched the interviews, he said, the children are not fearful of their father at all. So why are we even bringing the children into this when they're obviously showing that he's very loving? That's my whole point of what I was trying to get to is because I have from a lower court, the JD and R court, where the judge wanted to terminate my rights and everything and did all that got up to the circuit court, got an appeal, and then they wanted to go right back down to JD and R court here in Virginia. 
as soon as that happened, the, the judge, Steve Nogley, he sat there and said, he was like, can I keep jurisdiction over this? I don't know. He was asking the DA and asking the lawyers, you know, can he keep jurisdiction over it? Um, your circuit court, you're higher than the lower court. Yes, you know, that's what I'm sitting here thinking, and I did research on it, and yes, he could. And he did, in the end of it, keep the jurisdiction because he knew if I ended up going back down to JDNR, I'd be getting the shit show. But yet, I'm still here since September 26th when he made the judgment of reunification. I still haven't seen my children. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm reaching out to everybody. Of <coughs> Everybody was asking, okay, well, how do I sue a DAL? How do I sue a, a judge? You have to have a class action lawsuit. You have to have multiple people have a complaint about a DAL, about, uh, about a judge. When those people all get together and you go to the same lawyer, that's how you get started with suing an individual judge or an individual DAL. That's one thing that I've asked millions of questions about, and the only way that I found out is going through Virginia Code Court. It varies from state to state, but that's how you go is by you have to have a class action lawsuit. You have to have multiple people that have had the same problem out of an individual. So that's more so reaching out to your community in Maryland, in Florida, in other states of finding out who else has been done wrong, seeing if they're willing to step forward. But that's the biggest thing that you have here in Virginia is nobody is willing to stand together. Everybody's more fearful of, of everybody's more fearful of, of okay, what are gonna be the repercussions if I stand beside you? Could they possibly come after my children? And that has happened. I've had two friends where they have never had one iota, they sat there and went to court and testified on my behalf and since then, CPS has been on their ass. Yeah, I can't speak to Virginia, but I do know here in Hillsborough County, there's been enough complaints um, with the Judicial Qualifications Committee, the JQC, that a judge may be getting removed. So it's not a lawsuit, it's complaints through the JQC. I'm sorry. To get, get removed. I, I agree, that, that's a starting point, but that's not enough. If we do it, if you do it, ma'am, if Derek, if Blanche, if, if anybody of us were to sit there and do the actions with these people who we put into uh, who we put into power, if it was us doing it, we'd be locked behind jail, behind bars. It should be no different. Not not removing. I'm sorry. You should be stripped. You should be made to feel just as stupid and inferior as you have made us feel. John S. Go right ahead. <laughs> I realize the uh, rules are slightly different in different jurisdictions and states, but hopefully you shed a little light. Uh, any recommendations on how to find out what's happened? Um, as was mentioned uh, about a change of, of judicial branch, I've realized that locally we've had a bunch of turnover. I know one judge retired simply from old age. Uh, there was no scandal going on. I, I know her well enough to know her personally. Um, and it's moved around. But we had a hearing officer that just disappeared, and no one knows why. No one's saying a word. Uh, we've had a few other judges that there was a big pomp and circumstance. They, they announced it a month before, and there was a big party, and they walked out the door and waved by, and others that just poof, up and disappeared. Any, any ideas how to find out what happened to them? Um, not necessarily, like, why they left, but I do know I try to keep track of vacancies on the judicial side by either going to the judicial directory for that circuit and or I go to the Florida Bar to figure out um, have they announced any vacancies on that route? But a lot of times, if there's a retirement, they'll announce it to us lawyers. But other than that, I wouldn't know, other than those two things I've mentioned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're, we're approaching a very late in the evening, so we're going to uh, say goodbye to everyone for tonight. Ms. Ask, you have the last words of the evening. Oh, like I do. Yes, you do. Well, thank you guys for allowing me the opportunity to come and speak. It's been a pleasure speaking with you guys. I meant every word that I said. Um, I really think you guys are passionate. I think that you guys have something great here. Having this community um, where it's a safe space, you can vent, you can shed light. You're not alone. We're all honestly in this together. And so I highly encourage you guys to seek um, people who you believe should be on the bench and also consider going down this path because it's it's a fight. It really is. And I just ask you guys to keep fighting. Um, don't give up. I know it's frustrating, but it'll be worth it in 
the end. The kids will only say, Miss Smith, she still fought for me. My dad, he still fought for me. Till this day, I'll never forget when my mom used to make my dad feel like he was nothing. And I saw it. Kids watch. And I, I'm closer to my dad than I am my mom because of that. You know, when, when moms say, don't do this, he's bad, he's bad, you naturally gravitate to that other parent. So just be mindful of that. Kids have a good I'm 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 an equal opportunity parent, but I do have a special place in my heart for fathers because I'm a daddy's girl. So I get it. Please give your email and your phone number. Okay, I'll leave it now. Well, well, say it for everyone that's watching as well, because there's there's father advocacy groups that's looking as well. If you feel comfortable, say that again. Say it, say it because we're we're live on Facebook, so people who are in, who are not on the committee, or observing the committee, they can um, hear your name and phone number. So my name is Shamika S H A M I K A. My last name is Ask You, like ask you a question. A S K E W. I can be found on. Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok. I'm usually on TikTok every day doing this challenge. It's Ask You Law Office is the handle. Um, my email address is s dot ask you. So s period ask you at ask you law office dot com. Um, and my personal business, not my personal cell phone, my business cell phone is eight one three three one five zero zero five seven. I'm telling you guys now. I don't answer questions outside of my two jurisdictions that I practice law in, because that would be considered unauthorized practice of law. But what I can do is try to connect y'all with somebody who's passionate as I am. Um, and yeah, it's really been a pleasure being here. I've enjoyed it because everybody knows I'm usually in the bed by now. But this has been um, a pleasure to be here. It really has been. And I really, really want you guys to not give up. I. I became a lawyer. It took me, I failed the bar exam seven times. Y'all not dealing with an average person on this call. I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew my mom would always tell me, Shamika, I don't know why God keeps allowing you to fail, but there's going to be mothers and fathers who keep having a fight going to court constantly, and you're going to have to be that lawyer that perseveres. That is me. So that's why I don't want you guys to stop, because... I know how long it took me to get here, and it's a journey. It is a journey, but in the end, I think you guys will be successful. Where do you practice again? I'm licensed in Michigan and in Florida, so all of my cases right now are in Florida because I've been here the last 10 years, but I'm from Michigan, so I'm actually building my practice out there right now as we speak, so I'm now virtual, so I don't have physical office space anymore because I want to travel between both states. There's a lot of work to be done, you guys. A whole lot. Michigan is nothing like Florida. I thought it would be better. It's worse. We submitted, we submitted the uh, bill proposal to two state representatives in the state of Michigan, so the good that act will be following. You I hope so. I hope so. Because I was bought in um, Michigan too. Oh, really? Michigan. Yeah. When I tell you, I have, I had a case where mom never showed up. Didn't did nothing. Still got primary custody, physical. And I'm like, if this was Florida, that would have easily won because she was a no-show. But it's a system that we had to um, come against. And I apologize. Like I said, I am a believer. I do a lot of praying and fasting because I would not be here without it because there's a lot of corruption that I see often. So I appreciate the opportunity. That's that's my two cents. Thank you, and thank you so much. And for the seven thousand three hundred something people that are watching us live right now, thank you for tuning in to the hurt story. Eight thousand five hundred. Eight thousand five hundred that are watching us live now. Um, and then may I, uh, if I may, um, you guys, uh, um, check us out. It'll help Dr. Jennings continue his work. It's his book, Ethan's Good Dad Act. You were um, supposed to send me the link for that. Okay, we'll do that tonight. Yeah, I would love to do that. And I want to um, hear about your process of the book because I'm writing the book too. Okay. So you guys check out check out Dr. Jennings Ethan's Good Dad Act book. This helps him continue his work. 
And then may I may I plug shameless plug too though? Yes. Um, any of any of um, you guys that are watching that are in the Phoenix area, please come and check out. Um, we're having a free legal workshop for Phoenix dads, um, and for Phoenix dads here in um, this Saturday at eleven thirty. Um, look on Single Fathers Network for information. Um, it's limited space. We only have a few spots available. So if you have a a um, a uh, court custody situation that you need help with. Um, we'll have a lawyer there that will help answer uh, your questions for about an hour and a half, two hours. So, very good. Appreciate. Sorry, that. guys. I have one last thing. You just remain. You made me think of something that I heard about today. If anybody is on from Michigan, specifically in Wayne County, I signed up to be a volunteer attorney. They have this program apparently where you can get child support arrears removed. And if y'all know anything about child support and that being the system of being in bondage and the cycle of going to jail, having your license suspended, this is something you guys need to be at. Spread the word. It's November 9th, 2024. It's going to be held at Wayne County Community College. Um, the program is from one to four. And I know the focus is on child support arrears. Um, again, it's a free legal community event in Detroit, Michigan, November 9th, from 1 to 4, I believe is the time. But reach out to me, and I wouldn't mind sharing the information once that's I get great, it. That's great so. news. Great news for dads who need help in Wayne County, Michigan. Um, Kasasi, thank you for bringing up the book. If anyone's interested in the book, they can go to Amazon and look up Ethan's Good Bad Act or Ethan's Good Bad Act.com. It was number one in child advocacy in the morning, divorce and family law with the first speech. It's probably right. shifting to a different level right now, but we did we do have proof we were number one on the charts. <laughs> we're not a Rihanna, but we're good, right? <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and um I wanna thank everybody for sticking with this and sticking with the program. We have some dads that are not here that are normally here. We usually have twenty five thirty, but you know we see it's quality, not quantity. Spread the word for folks to go to gooddadact.com. Join and become a member. If you need personal consultation to help motivate you, and you need some issues you want to vet out, there's a consultation tab, uh, a box on the bottom of the first page of the Good Dad Act that website. You can sign up there to get the individual help and um, counseling you may need, and inspiration to help you win your case, so you don't have to give up. And you know, 15 years later, your kid's gonna come. Where were you? Where, where were you for my prom? Where were you for this? And we don't want you to get labeled. I did beat dad. We want you to be a good dad because there's a lot of us out here. Uh, this is our 66th week of doing this. Uh, next week will be the 67th. Um, I don't have an announcement of who the attorney is for next week, but we hope that you all tune in next week. And thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Jerome, for sharing your space on Facebook with us. And to all those folks that are watching this by tomorrow, sometime tomorrow, as this repeats on everyone's page, our numbers are going to jump from you know, 24,000, 50,000 people. Last week's, I went back and looked at last last week's program. Um, we have over 25,000 people, you know, repeating and watching. So, some good information. Thank you, Ms. Askey, for all your help. Hopefully, you can have a hyperlink to our website so that people can find you much quicker. Gotcha. Right, um, so, mm -hmm. I'm purchasing the book now. All right. Thank you so much for that. Thank you all for listening. Like I said, Dad's not the only one. This is something that's happened all across the country. Uh, my GoFundMe is connected. Help me get my sons home. And uh, we'll see you all next week. God bless. Thank you all.